Welcome everyone to our first look at the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League story and gameplay overview. Today we're going to be watching their latest trailer, which is going to be part one of their series covering the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game, starting off with the point of where the story is actually taking, and then from there they're going to be showcasing some gameplay. And we'll also go over the frequently asked questions on their page. So with that said, let's get into it. Here we go. To introduce you to our story, let's jump into an early part of the game. Amanda Waller, the director of the government agency Argus, sends the team behind enemy lines into Metropolis. Harley Quinn, should you not Man, be I'm, more I'm really looking forward to this she game. wired that way. Oh, dead shot. Hidden in an underground train station, the team finds a secret elevator. A secret we elevator. Where the hell we are. Let's play along with Waller. Oh, is this a superhero museum? <laughs> and superheroes and museums <clears throat> i've seen it on tv it's the hall of justice so let's oh snap the <sighs> Idiot. straight up in the hall of justice through these doors lies the inner sanctum of the justice league okay sounds very grand doesn't it wonder woman looking sick is. She is a dame who can almost make me listen to a boring PSA. Don't touch anything that's going to set off Man. an alarm. I ain't fighting any supers for you. I don't know I who I would play as the first. Justice League, and still, they are larger than I expected. Wait, what does that say? Those holograms aren't actual size, Shark Man. I only have one power so I would never give up. The character is that they're in Hall of Justice, and the first thing they think is, the what can we steal? Hey man, watch the ah shit glass. I'm okay. What the hell you got there? Thought this baby was a myth. Speed force gauntlet. Back when Doc Savannah tried to lift Flash's gimmick. <laughs> Yo. Oh my god. <sighs> Miss Garrett. Oh yeah. So this game takes place five years after Arkham Knight. I'm still okay. <laughs> you found the Riddler's hat of invisibility. It looks great on him. Where'd the shark go? Children. <laughs> Ooh, nothing says international assassin like a frickin' jetpack. Shit, I'd break my damn neck. You're probably right. Jetpacks seem more like a death drug thing anyway. Mine. Oh, he actually put it on. <laughs> that uh, hat's not going to get you vertical, Shark. I can make my own way up. Let's get up on that roof and get our freedom. Damn, I I really like his like shark's tattoos. Killer shark. Or <laughs> so here we're taking these iconic characters who don't take shark first the way they do in our game. But that's the beauty of our storytelling. We've managed to take these unique abilities and make that an extension of their personalities. Our power is undeniable. 
We loved working with Gotham and making that a world for players to experience. And we wanted to do that with a new location. We felt that Metropolis was the natural next step to extend that. A better way to introduce it than through an invasion from Brainiac with no Justice League to save them. Damn. By the way, chat, sorry, there was a, a little uh, thing that was this on the screen there for We're a second. We're that thing, right? The entire game is about fighting behind enemy lines. Oi, Wallet, what the hell have you sent us into? It's a bloody war zone out here. There's a giant skull in the sky. Congratulations, Task Force X. You're the first assets to make it into Metropolis alive. We're sending a signal transponder to your location. So you're essentially in Brainiac's backyard. Your orders are to activate that transponder. Okay. What the hell are those things? I mean, there's no civilians left. Brainiacs killed them or made them into soldiers to do his bidding. And through this corruption, the people of Metropolis have become extensions of Brainiac. What the player knows from our title and what the Suicide Squad is about to find out is that here, the Justice League are the bad guys. They've been corrupted by Brainiac, and over the course of the game, your mission will be to kill them. Ugh, Green Lantern, nice. Hey, your face always looks so... what? Harley doesn't have any innate superpowers, so to go up against these beings that have incredible strength, it's, it's a challenge. I'm in the middle of a recon for Brainiac. Let's walk and talk. <laughs> You're talking about, you know, the all-star team of superheroes here. Samoa Joe this. does Pay attention, King boy. Shark. Let me go Please. Get it off. Get it off. Looks bad. Feels worse. But once you've been enhanced, there's no going back. Outstanding. When you face off against the most iconic characters in all of superhero them in the Justice League, it's by many uh, people's definition an impossible task. Sure. Searching for stragglers, augmenting Brainiac's army. The shot gets it. The stakes that Rocksteady sets, the challenges they heap upon you as a player. Time to rally up with Brainiac. Ready to make the leap? You know immediately, like, this is the tallest task I will ever take on in a video game. Man. Flash! Brainiac wondered how you got off the ship. Speedster secret. The League doesn't leave anyone behind. Let's make you right, buddy. You know, that's just what I was gonna say. You're gonna be fighting the Justice League. Hey, Metropolis! There's nothing more high stakes than the boss battles we have in this game. These are gods like Green Lantern, Batman, Superman, The Flash. So, what's the plan? At that point, the game really opens up. We yeah. start to see players look at their weaponry and really ask the question of, like, how am I gonna kill the Justice League? Yeah, yeah looking actually, forward to though. killing the Justice League and all, but, uh, well, you know, these guns are a bit shit. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> then head northwest. That's the last known of a Gotham arms dealer who's dug into Metropolis, Oswald Cobblepot. The freaking penguin! You want to last more than 10 seconds against the League? Cobblepot's been running anti-meta weapons for years. I want him recruited and brought back to the Hall of Justice. Oh, I'm going to recruit the shit out of him. Since Batman Arkham Knight, the Penguin is no longer confined to Gotham City. He's made a name for himself in Metropolis as the authority on anti-meta human weapons. Now, Waller wants the squad to recruit him for Argus. I see you All right, that looks pretty. Damn, the city looks big so there. To stay off the streets. Setting a new recon point. Go. At the heart of each character's playstyle is their traversal. All right, that looks Traversal sick. gives the player total freedom. Every character has their own way of getting around that determines how the player moves through this world. Don't like to boast, but how great was I? <laughs> now, Controlling a superhero character is fun. It's a power fantasy for all players. 
We wanted movement through the city to be fun. Just existing and moving around in Metropolis is a good time. Huh. Metropolis is quite a normal city. Well, as normal as a city can be in this universe. The no UI looks really clean for this game. We spent a game. lot of time trying to get that art direction correct, trying to get the feel for it correct. You get to see all the kind of DC lore that builds this space. Yeah, that's what I'm really excited. I, I really want to see how much lore they actually built with like locations and it's items and you know there's a lot we can inject into the city that makes it more than just a city uh, penguin is not truly a penguin yeah <laughs> mate and i'm not a boomerang it is known for its size its scale anything from the dc law you look at metropolis as the city of tomorrow when did penguin get out anyway out he was barely in money talks Creeps walk, you know. I hear that. It's just a great way for players to experience Metropolis in okay, a new Okay, Traversal way. looks really good. I I'm really down with that. Couple G'day, bots. Pango. Remember me? Jeez, he's old. No. Older. <laughs> Ain't this a right rogues gallery? Who's the big bleeder? Think his cousin used to work for me. Is it still Ooh, Nolan one? North? Let's get him out of a circus. We're getting the hell out of the city before Argus finds us. You in? But we are working for Argus. You bloody what? Real slick, Shark. <laughs> Good talk. Nice catching up. Give my regards to the locals. <laughs> Nice. Traversal is at the very core of our game. You will need to be on the move and master each character's movements if you want to succeed. All this grapple is made to let you take advantage of the environment to quickly get out of troublesome situations. Or you can use it to quickly close the distance to introduce them to her baseball bat. Swinging from the bat drone lets her circumvent the trooper's shield and flank them. Okay, that was like a counter shot there. Into the air to shoot the corrupted from above. Now that you've seen some of Harley's combat in this scene, let's explore the rest of the squad's unique playstyles in other encounters. Captain Boomerang uses a mix between sniper rifles, SMGs, and shotguns. What's cracking? Huh. Each character has an iconic melee attack that can be used to create what we call juggle kills and also break enemies' shields. Juggling an enemy with a melee attack means they take guaranteed critical hits from all the guns for a short period after. Shoot enemies in their legs and then close the distance to do a shield harvesting strike to get some shield back. Let's shift focus to King Shark. <laughs> Cause to celebrate! King Shark is literally death from above, Man. which he gladly shows with his Atlantean drop attack. The more I He's see the of King Shark, the, the more I'm kind of leaning towards him. And shotguns and his trusted cleavers, sickles, and combat knives for some brawling action. For the that bigger enemies, gun each too. character gets a super powerful single target attack. The suicide strike. This one shots any enemy hit, but it takes longer to recharge, so it's important to use it tactically. <laughs> oh Finally, dead shot. See, <laughs> so you're low caliber. Dead shot's high. high caliber. Uh, his dead shot looks pretty sick to let him too. Trade his own vantage points. This works great with his weapon loadout: sniper rifles, assault rifles, and pistols. For more up close action, dead huh. shot relies on his iconic wrist cannons. Right, One that's thing sick. we really wanted to bring into this game was a reimagined version of the Orkham counter system and mix that with our traversal and shooter gameplay. Introducing counter shot. Each enemy has a different reaction to the counter shot. Some will be stunned, some will take damage, some will be interrupted and then get really annoyed. Okay. Now let's take a look at Harley absolutely demolish Brainiac's forces with all these tools. So it is a, a counter, it is literally a counter shot. <laughs> That's interesting. Oswald Cobblepot, my man. Do we have a job for you? Tell him, Quinn. You're making guns for us now, bird brain. Thanks for joining us for episode one of Suicide Squad Insider. What? Ah! what? I already started, so I followed through. 
In the months leading up to our launch on February 2nd, 2024, we're looking forward to sharing more details and insights about Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. In our next episode, we'll be deep diving into more gameplay, combat mechanics, and how to take a fight to the enemy in your own unique style. I want to show you what happens next. Let's call it a sneak preview. So really this is what we're getting like in the next one. All these characters that we bring to life in this DC universe. I'm going to enjoy this. Okay. You're starting with characters who aren't very powerful, and through the story, you're learning how to use their skills and become powerful. We really wanted to deep dive into the RPG system. You have your enhanced traversal, you have gunplay, you have weapons. There are upgrades and unique talents. And all of that stuff fusing together to create this kind of unique experience. Together, we are unstoppable. Join me. Are you kidding? Zone. And there it is. Plus, yeah, you get the classic skins. They look all pretty cool. All right, so we're going to move over to the frequently asked questions for this game because I saw that it, that they published this as well, and there's a few answers that we got from this. So, of course, the game comes out on February 2nd, 2024. Then if you look here, uh, there will be early access for 72 hours if you pre-order the deluxe edition or if you pick that one up so it looks like we'll be jumping into it on january yeah january january 30th would be the day so i'm i'm definitely going to be picking up the the deluxe edition most likely so what do you actually get with that one so the game itself looks like it is going to be the 70 dollars. i will be playing it on pc myself but you do get it looks like there's a free battle pass tier um, there's four classic outfits that you get for pre-ordering and four rogue outfits, one for each squad member for pre for pre-ordering the game. Oh no, it's PS5 digital only. Okay. So those outfits, I guess are PS5 only. Uh, then as far as the deluxe edition, so this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. You get all previous things, obviously. You get four Justice League outfits, which they actually look kind of cool. Um, you get three Black Mass themed notorious weapons, I guess. Uh, four squad goals. Or four squad golds themed weapon dolls. One for each squad member. One premium battle pass token. I'm not sure how long the battle pass will actually be going for. Um, but I guess we'll, we'll find out. Four no shade outfit color sw swatches? Switches? I don't know if that's supposed to be switches. One variant for each of the squad members. And then you get this 72 hours early access to the game. Now it will be available digitally and physically. That is the I kind of what I told you, the digital deluxe or so pre-ordering the game does give you the classic outfits. And this kind of breaks down. Harley Quinn's is from Batman Adventures. Deadshot is from the Batman 59. Captain Boomerang from The Flash 117. And King Shark from Superboy. Now, here's where it gets really interesting, and I didn't know this. So, starting out, you will have playable characters will be Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, and King Shark. But then it says additional playable characters will be available post-launch. So, who will they be? I'm not exactly sure. We don't really know so far. If you guys have any suggestions or if there's somebody you would prefer to see actually in the game, leave it in the comments. I'm curious. Personally, I, I feel like a game like this, Anarchy, could work out really well. I think that would be kind of cool to see from like Batman Arkham Origins. If they brought him back in this game, I, I feel like that would be interesting. Uh, and then I'm sure like Lex Luthor, it, literally there's tons that you can name off. But it'll be interesting to see who who these actually end up being. And it talks about who the actual uh, voice actors are, which we kind of saw in that video. Uh, the game is connected to the Arkham series, and it picks up five years after the events of Batman Arkham Knight. So, and then they even say that there are some related narrative elements that will pop up in the game. You will be able to customize your character's look with gear, cosmetic, and weapons. There will be a solo mode and four-player co-op mode. Apparently, you can switch between characters at any time outside of combat. You can go through the main story as any of the four characters. 
You can play it solo again or co-op uh, online. There is no local co-op as far as we know. Unfortunately, the game does require an internet connection. Uh, yeah, it says even right here. Co-op can only be played online with an internet connection. There's no local co-op. And somewhere in here it says that it does require you to have a internet connection at all times to be able to play. An internet connection is required to play Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League solo or online. Nobody is a fan of that. That should never be a thing, especially offline. Playing solo shouldn't be required to be online, but it is what it is for right now, and we'll see if that changes. The positive thing with this, though, is the game is full cross-play, full cross-platform play and cross-progression online co-op that is a thing that marvel never did unfortunately even though it was the time that they should have and it probably would have made the game last a little bit longer per platform but since it was always divided avengers obviously is delisted and completely gone now unless if you already owned a copy of it so out the gate it's nice to see that they're they're going to have this, and hopefully it is day one. I hope it's not one of those things like where they say, yes, it's going to be coming, but it's not day one. I really hope that's a day one thing. It's not connected to any movies or anything like that. It's its own story within the DC universe. They say that they're aiming for 60 FPS on consoles, and then for PC, it says the specifications will, will be available closer to launch. Hopefully it's not locked locked to like 60, 90 or anything. Even Arkham Knight, that game was locked to 90 FPS at maximum. You can edit the INI file to change that. Even with that, um, hopefully it doesn't require you to go that extra step. There will be post-launch content like we saw earlier. There's going to be new characters, but it also says new story content, missions, gear, weapons, cosmetic items, in-game events, and more. What will they actually be? Who knows? We have yet to see. There is a battle pass. A new battle pass will be available during each season of post-launch content and will have free tier tiers available at no cost to any players or to all players, along with premium tiers that will be available as an optional in-game purchase. All battle items purchased will be cosmetic. All, all pa battle pass items will be cosmetic and will not affect gameplay in any way. So we'll at least get the first season, but we'll see what we get for future seasons of the game. And then it's final one or second to last one. Uh, they will have cosmetic items available for optional in-game purchase that need to be, uh, that can be used to customize playable characters. Each cosmetic only battle pass will have premium tiers that will be available via an option optional in-game purchase all in-game purchases will be completely optional and not affect gameplay in any way personally i'm perfectly fine with that the biggest thing is i hope it just doesn't go the avengers route where it's like 20 dollars per skin or anything of that nature if you reasonably be reasonably price the skins i think more people will buy them if you have a skin for five bucks i'm more interested i've almost never spent anything more than like ten dollars on a skin ever because it's just i there's no game out there that i really play that would be willing or worth it for me to to spend even ten or twenty dollars for it i played avengers a good amount and even then i never bought any of the mcu skins because i just never played it enough and the final one is no suicide squad kill the justice league will not have loot boxes which is good to see for the most part as long as it kind of goes back to that last one, as long as things are reasonably priced and not get $20 or more for one skin, then I think that that'll be fine. Now, one final thing, if you look at the pre-order option, it kind of shows you the two, what's included with standard edition and what you actually get with the deluxe edition. Again, pre-order bonuses, you really just get the main game, the classic outfits and the rogue outfits for PS5 only. For the standard, and then for the deluxe, you get Justice League outfits, the three black mass weapons, squad golds, weapon dolls, one battle pass token, no shade color swatches. I'm still confused what that is, but I guess we'll find out. 72 hours of early access, classic outfits, and the rogue outfits.
So yeah, and then down here it says Battle Pass token re redeemable for premium Battle Pass access between seasons one to four. So we're getting at least four seasons. One Battle Pass available per season. Early access starting January 30th, 2024. Actual playtime depends on purchase date. Yeah, that's typical. I'm uh, I'm interested. I'm excited. I mean, even currently playing through the Arkham series games, I'm excited to see how much of this one actually ties in and continues the storyline of Batman of the Justice League, like kind of builds more lore to what we already know from the previous games. So either way, I love superhero games. I'm going to be there day one without a doubt. So I hope to see you guys then too. Any other videos that come out about this, we'll probably check out. I'll probably do a similar breakdown of it, and uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, keep for whatever else we get. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Subscribe for more stuff like this. And as always, thanks for watching.